As we were singing that song this morning, there's a couple things that occurred to me that uh, God was just kind of dropping into my heart as we were singing. The first thing is that if we would truly receive, apprehend, believe, and live like the two things in that song we sang about are really true in that chorus. Number one, he is what? He's a good father. And number two, that you are what? You're loved by him. That would change everything, wouldn't it? That changes life. Another thing that that really hit me is in that bridge we sang, you are perfect in all of your ways. How many of you have gone through some stuff maybe in the last few years that you wish you hadn't or that maybe you wouldn't have asked for? Have you faced anything that was really difficult? Did, did you believe right in the middle of that that God is perfect in all of his ways to us? That's when it's hard, isn't it? But I found myself singing, you are perfect in how many? All of your ways to us. Even in the ways that we don't understand, even in the ways we don't choose, even in the ways that confound us, even in the ways that test us. And I'm really glad that in the midst of his perfect ways coming to us, we still experience his goodness because he's our father and he loves us with everything we have with everything he has. And uh, I'm so thankful for that today. You know, today we're going to look at a passage of scripture uh, along with some other scriptures that relate to it. There's a story in this passage of scripture. It's in Exodus chapter 17. And it's, it's about uh, people, the people of Israel, who experienced something that was difficult for them. Something that tested them. Something that they really were challenged by. And when they faced this test, we're going to see what happened as a result and what the outcome was. In Exodus chapter 17, right at the very beginning of the chapter, it says that the whole Israelite community, they set out from the desert and they traveled from place to place as the Lord had commanded them. And they camped together, but there was no water for the people to drink. Now, you and I probably don't face this predicament too often where there's no water to drink. How many of you know you can't last very long without any water, right? So this is a serious situation. It says, so they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to kill me. And the Lord answered Moses, go out and stand in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile River and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa, which means testing, and Meribah, which means quarreling, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now, many of you put your hands up and said that you have gone through stuff. But I know that none of you have ever questioned God like this, right? Right? When you go through stuff, of course, you've never asked if he's really there, have you? If he's really with you, if he's really listening to you, if he's really doing what he promised he would do. Now, I want you to pause with me for a second, because when we go through difficult times, when we go through testing, it's really easy to do that, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of 
questions I'm going to ask you this morning, most of them are not rhetorical. You're allowed to re reply, okay? Is that all right? All right, work with me here, okay? Now, just think about it. When you go through testing, it's really easy to ask questions, right? Yes. Right. It is for, it's for me too. But I want you to think about the, the things that we ask. God, are you really there? Are you really listening? Are you really with me? Are you really going to do what you promised you would do? I want you to pause for a second and think about what you're actually asking God. God, I know you said you would be with me, but is that true? Lord, you said you would be listening to me and you would incline your ear to hear my cry, but are you really listening? Lord, I know you said that you, would, you promised you would provide for me and you would provide a way out and you would, you would strengthen me in the midst of trial and you would, you would give me victory over the situations that I face. But Lord, are you really doing that? I want you to think about that for a minute. You are then questioning God on every single thing he said he would do. And if we take it one step further, we are actually doubting that God is who he said he is and said what he did and will do what he, what he said he would do. That's why God had a problem with the people of Israel. Quarreling and grumbling and testing and questioning him. Now, I've done the same. Welcome to my club. We're all in this together, right? But before we go any further, I want us to take one quick look back. We just finished a series called Abundant Living which was really fo focused narrowly, very, very specifically on different areas of our lives in which God desires that we experience his abundance. We looked at friends where we experienced difficulty in relationships and the key to having abundance in those relationships. We looked at finances, seeing that generosity and gratitude are the keys to us experiencing abundance in our finances. We looked at feelings. We saw how many things like shame and sin and stress can bring uh, an emotional wearing out to us and that God desires to remove that and bring emotional health to our lives. We looked at our future. And, and we, can, we saw that there is a pattern, a biblical pattern for moving forward and living in the abundance that God has for our future that's waiting for us. And that requires trust, doesn't it? Well, we just finished that series, and guess what starts next week? Advent. Isn't that amazing? I mean, now we have the weather for it. So now Advent can begin, right? And in this Advent season, we are going to have a series that we are calling Abundance Unwrapped, in which we are going to take time to look at some of the abundant gifts that God's given us and learn how we can unwrap those gifts. And all the truths that we saw in the last series will impact and do impact the way we approach what we're looking at today, the way we approach Advent, and ultimately what flows out of us during this season. So today, we need to ask some questions. Questions like, what abundance do I have? What am I full of? Why do I have it? What do I do with the abundant life that I'm experiencing? How do I prepare for a truly abundant next season, next chapter of my life? What is God calling me to? Well, if you remember throughout that series... We moved throughout that series towards the truth that the abundant life that we've received, how many of you are glad that you are receiving abundant life from, from the Lord, right? The abundant life that we've received is meant not to be just for us. Yes. Is that true? Yes. But it is to also be for those who we are called to reach and serve. It's meant to spill over, to overflow, to be given away so that it becomes possible and reality for others as well. We have many times throughout our history, and especially in the last while, we have parked on John chapter 10, where Jesus talks about the fact that he has come to give us life and more abundantly. That's been our whole theme for this year. But you know what? In that same chapter, he uses a metaphor. And the metaphor is about sheep. And you and I are those sheep. And he talks about the fact that sheep need a shepherd. 
and that he is the good shepherd and that he gives his life for the sheep and that he is the gate into the sheep fold and that the sheep fold is so important because it's where the sheep have safety and security and, and abundance together and that the sheep need one another as well as needing the shepherd. Are you getting the picture? Abundance is meant to be experienced by all together with the shepherd. And that's the key to not just surviving when one of the sheep goes through something, but thriving because of the support of the other sheep and the life of the shepherd and the guidance and protection of that shepherd in that fold. And there, there are some questions that we need to seriously ask today, and there are some truths that we are going to listen to today and embrace, and there are some effects that happen as a result of doing that. So, there are two questions. Everybody say two questions. Two questions. There are two truths, two truths, and there are two effects, all right, or results, whatever you want to call them, all right? Let's take a look at them. Number one, question number one, what am I full of? You see, everyone's full of something. I know some words are coming into your head right now that probably shouldn't be. But the reality is, <laughs> we're full of something. And the question is, what abundance do I actually have? What have I received? What is inside me? What has been produced in me? Now, in, Jesus, or in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus said some words about that. He said, the mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart. A good person brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil person brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So what he's saying is, is that which you are full of, is that which will come out of your mouth. Now, if you think for a minute over the last while, and you think about what has come out of your mouth, some of it might, hopefully, is good. And if some of it's not, I just want to tell you that's not accidental. That's what was in you. Unfortunately, it's true. And when I am confronted with some of the things that come out of my mouth, I realize that it came out because it was in there to start with. And in Psalm chapter 23, if you remember what David said in the middle of that psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, he pauses right in the middle and says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup, what? It, it runs over, it f overflows. It's full and running over. And, and, the, and the reality is this, that God desires to fill our cup, but sometimes it is full of things that God has not filled it with. And there is this sense that we, does, that we really need our cup to be filled to running over. But it depends on what it is that it's being filled up with, right? That's all the difference. Everyone has an abundance of something in them. And the question is, what do they have an abundance of? What is in them? What is being poured into them? What is it that they're receiving? What is the abundance that is in them? Is it love or hate? Is it grace or judgment? Is it forgiveness or bitterness? Is it kindness or anger? Is it mercy or revenge? Do you know what's inside you? Do you know what you are having an abundance of? You see, when the people of Israel were in need of, of water, unfortunately they were a little bit like we are, what did they do? Did they trust the Lord? And did they say, God, you are faithful to us. You have provided for our needs thus far. And so, Lord, we wait on you in faith that you will provide this for our very basic need, for you know our thirst, and you are the water of life, and you will provide water for us. Is that what they did? No. They complained, they grumbled, they quarreled, and they challenged Moses, the man of God, and said, why did you bring us from Egypt to die here in the desert? Now, the question is, what do you do, what do I do when we are in need of something, maybe even in desperate need, when we are brought to a place where we must trust God or die? What do we do? 
Well, let's take a look what happened. We read the story. If you remember, Moses was instructed by God to strike the, the rock with his staff. And when he did that, what happened? Did God just laugh at them? Did God just say, yeah, I told you I provide for you, but I, I, I lied to you? No way. God is always true to his promise. What happened? Water came gushing out of that rock. And not just a little bit, enough water to bring life and vitality and strength to an entire nation of millions of people. That's a lot of water. But what did they call the place? Did they name the place life or provision or water? Or promise? No, they named it testing and quarreling. Isn't it interesting that that which that place became known for was the quarreling and the grumbling and the testing of God that they did? You know, it's amazing because sometimes the words that come out of our mouth, they, they, they can be that which are hard to like take away later, right? They're hard to stop remembering. They, they leave a mark. And sometimes it's not a good mark. Sometimes the things that can be remembered of well, the things that come out of our mouth is not the things that you want to be remembered for. But it's important to take a look at what, what are we being remembered for in each place that we come. Are we being remembered for testing God and quarreling and, and not trusting him? Or are we being remembered for trust and faith and hanging on to him no matter what and allowing the sweetness of his abundance to be poured into us and to flow out of us. In James chapter 4, James says, consider it a sheer gift or pure joy. I read this this past week and I struggled with it. <laughs> he said, consider it pure joy, a sheer gift when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your life is forced, your faith is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. How many of you here this morning are desiring to become mature and well-developed and not deficient in any way in your spiritual life? Be careful. Watch it before you put up your hand. Did you read the did you did you hear the first part of that? Guess what's coming. Now, how many of you enjoyed tests in school? Are there any weirdos in the room? <laughs> Jeff Peters, I am not surprised and Jessica, not surprised in either of those cases, all right? I love you guys. All right. How many of you hated tests in school? Ah, oh, more of the normal people in the room. That's good. The rest of you haven't made up your minds, but you will by the time you leave, all right? How many of you uh, took tests really well? You generally did really well on them, all right? How many of you not so much? Okay. How many of you used that as an excuse for not getting good grades in school? <laughs> I know I did. Well, yeah, I uh, didn't do so well on the test. You know what I mean? It's like I had a good mark, but then pfft, barely passed. Why? Because of the test. You get me? Isn't it interesting though? The test made my mark worse. Why? Because it showed how much I really knew. Hmm. You know, I especially hate it when tests are like 50% of your mark. Didn't you hate that? It's like, man, I, I, I had, uh, you know, a good mark. Like before I went into this test, I had 48 out of 50. And as I, when I came out, I have 52 out of 100. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got four out of 50 on the test. Like it's like it can go very badly after that. Imagine if we had a test at the end of each Sunday service here at Gateway. Wouldn't that be fun, Pastor Rick? At the end of the sermon, okay, the tests are being passed out now. This is worth 50% of whether you get to heaven. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, no, but I mean, like seriously, that, that would not, that would change our experience at this church, right? It would also change the attendance level, but <laughs> that, that uh, video Pastor Rick did on the finances, we'd just not even bother with that because everybody's gone. We don't like tests, do we? We don't like being put into a place where we, it has to be found out whether we've really learned the lesson. We don't really like that, do we? But let me ask you this, how many of you appreciate things that have been tested? like the brakes on your car. You glad they were tested? 
How about other drivers? <laughs> now, some of them could use a little more testing, don't you think? What about the airline pilot? How many of you are glad he was tested? Amen. How about the doctor or the surgeon who's about to operate on you? Imagine you're just about to be put under for surgery and you overhear this. Yeah, I didn't even have to write the exam in med school. <laughs> like seriously, it's a good thing, isn't it? We love the fact that things are tested. Why? Because you can know that that which is tested can be trusted. Hmm. I want to know that I can be trusted, that God can trust me. In Psalm 139, David said, search me, God. Know my heart. Test me. Whew. I wonder if David even knew what was in store for him when he said that. And know my anxious thoughts. You ever have those? He said, test me. And I, I, I want to say that to God. <laughs> it's hard. I want to say it to him, but I'm not sure I'm going to like it. You see, our heart is no different. A heart that is tested can be trusted. And life's a lesson. It's probably the most important one. And in it, there will be tests. There will be ultimate tests. And we're living in this lesson. And how do we find out what's really inside us? It's only during the test that we really know whether we know. And it's like a squeezing. Whatever we're full of, this is truth number one, whatever we're full of is what will come out of us in the test. You ever squeeze grapes? You ever squeeze grapes before? You know what happens when you press grapes, right? What comes out of it? Of course. You ever squeeze grapes and go, I am in the mood for orange juice? <laughs> of course not. If you did, we'd be making a phone call for you <laughs> and admitting you because there'd be something wrong, right? If you thought you could squeeze grapes and get anything other than grape juice, then there'd be something wrong. But why is it? that sometimes when we're squeezed, we're surprised at what comes out. We don't know what's in there. I want to encourage you to not just automatically think you have this taken care of. I know God told me that this week. He said, Tim, be careful. Don't just think you have this automatically taken care of. Remember Jesus' words from Matthew 12 again. Every day, the Lord desires to store up good things in us so that those things can be brought out of our abundance for others to see. And every day, he needs to speak to us and show us what's inside us so we can surrender to him and surrender anything to him that needs to be. And the thoughts and the attitudes in the depths of our heart can be replaced with his thoughts and his attitudes and his nature and his character and the fruit of the spirit so that when it is squeezed, that's what comes out. I want that. Do you want that? So how do we get filled with the right kind of abundance? How, how do we prepare? How do we study for the ultimate test? I got some practical things from the world of education and their metaphors. Listen to them. I think, first of all, we need to listen to the teacher. What is he trying to tell you? That's where it starts. I think we need to study when everyone else is partying. You know, a lot of people just try to slide through this Christian life. The Bible says some people get into heaven by the skin of their teeth. But they won't be prepared when the test comes. Don't be like them. Number three, learn from other students. You know, we can learn from each other, eh? We don't have it all together yet. Join a study group. Most of us learn and prepare better in community, and we have a lot of good resources here that you can do that with. Are you truly in community here, or are you just warming a seat in the large classroom? 
Number five, get a tutor. Get a mentor. Sometimes we need extra help. Number six, understand. Don't just memorize. You ever heard this line? Well, that exam was a lot different than our notes. You know what I mean? And the reason you do badly in an exam that was different than your notes is because you memorized your notes instead of truly understanding what was taught you. There's a difference. Number seven, take mock tests and pop quizzes. You know, it's a good idea to test ourselves once in a while. In 2 Corinthians 13, Paul said, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. You know, it's a good idea to test ourselves before the big test comes. Number eight, go on a field trip. That means practically getting out and using what you're learning already, even if you haven't completed the course yet. Using it for life itself. I can tell you this, that if you will truly embrace what is needed to study for that test, then when the test comes, you will be full of the right stuff, of the right abundance, and what is in you will then come out, and you will like what you see, and others will like it too. I know that lately, I've been, uh, I've been faced with some things that are in me that I need to be honest about. I've been faced that there are some things that need to be replaced, things that need to change, things that I need to let God do in me. What's the effect? The effect is that we will be filled with God's abundance in every area of our lives. Remember all those areas we looked at in our last series? This is the key, friends. That's how you will be filled to abundance with all of those things in every single area. Question number two. This is the last one. Why do I have this abundance? This is about purpose. What's the purpose of it? What am I doing with it? Who is it really for? You see, we can only give away what we have. We can't give away that which we don't have. And that's true in every area of our lives. Whether we, whatever we've received is what we have to give. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, give and it will be given to you. A good measure. That means plenty. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. You see, the starting point of abundance is receiving from God that which he has for us so that we have something to give away. But truly, and this is... This is this is the secret, and we heard a little bit about this in our previous series, and it's, it's beautiful because it leads us to this truth. Truly experiencing abundance comes through giving, and it doesn't make sense in our economy. Our math, it doesn't add up, but that's how we receive more. God's divine plan of provision and abundance is that giving produces abundance, we heard some of that in that series when we specifically looked at finances. That as we receive, it's not just a good measure that's pressed down and shaken together, but it is also one that is running over. Because when something overflows, it shows what? It shows there's more than enough, that what's being poured into us cannot be contained by us, and that it is meant to spill over to anyone and everyone that's around us. That what is inside will affect what is on the outside. And friends, that is what God desires for us in every way. Not just in the area of finances, but in every area of our lives. You see, God desires that we don't just receive some, but that we receive it to the full. And what did Jesus say? That our cup will what? It will over flow to those around us. So there's going to be plenty. And there's more where that came from. In Genesis chapter 22, God gave this promise to Abraham, which was amazing and profound. He said this, I will surely bless you, and through your seed, all nations on earth will be blessed. Abraham was blessed by God specifically for that reason. Now, fast forward to the New Testament. Romans 9 says, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. That's us. 
And in, Gen- in Galatians 3, it says, those who have faith are children of Abraham. Those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So are you listening to this? The original promise, which was 4,500 years ago, was the starting point, the beginning, the origin of God saying that he would bless all the nations through the offspring of Abraham. And through Jesus Christ, you and I are the children of promise. You and I are the way that God desires to bless all the nations of the world. And that's why he desires for his abundance to overflow. So that we can be a blessing to others. We're never meant to just hold it or keep it to ourselves. So truth number two is that the abundance that we have is meant to overflow to others. It's simple, but it'll change your life if you put it into practice. You see, the purpose of abundance, overflowing, is simply that others can be blessed and not just us. As we come towards Advent, often people have this mysterious thing called the spirit of giving. You know what I mean? I wonder, rather than it just being a seasonal thing, I wonder if it can be a missional thing. You know, a purposeful thing. An overflow of the heart. That's all the time. That's regular. Whether it's Advent or not. I wondered that. So I want to ask you, how can we truly allow our abundance to overflow in blessing to others? I mean, what are some keys? What are some ways? What, is it, what does it look like, you know, when our abundance is just, it's so full that it's like overflowing and we can hardly contain it and we really don't know what to do with it all, but we're like, hey, you know what? I've got all this abundance and, you know, we come in contact with people say, hey, how's it going? You know, and we say, oh, I'm so glad I, I could be with you today. Yeah. Yeah, praise, oh, I'm, yeah, I was going to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. And it's like, I have all this abundance. What am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it, McKinley? Oh, 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 I know you weren't planning on being water baptized today. That's all, all right. And I feel bad because it's cold outside. Well, not really. But you know what? The abundance. Isn't it wonderful? Is it? It's wonderful. Oh, you didn't get enough. Yeah, there you go. You know, you know what the thing about that is, friends? You only get to see it flow over to others when you collide, when you bump into them, when you share it, when it comes in contact with them and they experience the water of life. And you know what? It's risky. I know McKinley felt like popping me (laughs) when I did that. But he's a good guy. It's risky. He could have said, get out of my face. I don't want any of that. Right? That's the risk we take. But guess what? The abundance that we have had is meant to overflow to others. And it will be felt. These guys are going to feel their wet clothes for a little while. (laughs) And they'll remember. And others will remember. So what are some ways? I've, I've got a bunch up there for you. Take a look at them. I believe we need to pray. I mean, I believe we need to ask God to lead us by his spirit daily. I believe we need to make time in our schedules to plan to use it for this. I believe we need to have thoughtfulness for other people's needs. Do you realize you can be an answer to prayer for someone in need? I believe we need to sacrifice. As Pastor Rick shared on that video about the need in our church and the vision for creating another space where we can reach out to children and youth in the name of Jesus and to see him touch and change their lives. That's what a second floor is for. When he shared that, It is about a sacrifice of giving that demonstrates our devotion and our surrender to God. And it's about outreach opportunities. That's another way. We don't just create these at Christmas because we like to do nice things at Christmas. This is about sharing the heart of God with people and engaging ourselves in this privilege of giving. So what's the effect? Simple. We will overflow with God's abundance in every area of our lives. We're going to have communion together. And as you're being served communion this morning, we're going to sing a worship song that is about God's amazing grace for us. Go ahead and begin to serve. And as we do that, I want, I want you to think about the fact that God pours out His abundance into you so that you can be used by him to pour it out.
to others. Just dwell on that for a minute and think about what we're about to do and celebrate as we worship together. Many centuries after Moses struck the rock at Horeb, another rock was struck. He is the rock of our salvation. He's the rock of ages. And he was struck. He was beaten. He was broken. And the water of life poured out for all who are thirsty. In John 7, Jesus said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Do you see, friends, we need that living water. And so do those who do not yet know Jesus, who do not yet know his love. They need his living water. As we participate in this time, we pause to remember what God did in sending his son as a sacrifice for our sins to remove the barrier between us and God so we could experience his abundance. We remember what was in Jesus. We remember that it came out as he was squeezed and tested, that he was, when he was mocked and he was beaten and he was crucified, love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and salvation came out as the body of Christ was broken. Let's partake of the bread together. Thank you, Lord, for the fact that when you were broken, it was your grace and mercy that poured out for me. We also remember that when he was pierced for our transgressions, when the chastisement that was rightfully due us was laid upon him and the iniquity of us all was borne by him, remember that his blood as it was spilled out what overflowed from that cross was the abundance and the provision of God for you the fullness and the riches of God's grace for you and we find that in relationship with Jesus and if you're here today and you don't really know a lot about what that means I just want to tell you when you place your faith in God and say God don't even I don't know a lot about this, but I know that what I'm hearing is resounding with something in my heart. When you embrace a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, you find out why He did all that for you. It's so you could know God's abundance. Let's partake of the cup together. And there's lots more where that came from. Will you stand with me today? In Revelation chapter 21, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. In Revelation 22, it says, let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. I want to tell you, there is so much abundance that God desires to fill us with and pour into us so that he can overflow us. And in this Christmas season, as we move forward in this, oh friends, keep your heart and your mind open to the Holy Spirit who wants to lead you and direct you how to overflow your abundance into their lives and to see people transformed by the power of God's grace. Oh Lord, help us to see you today. Help us to see you today, Lord. The love in your eyes, the abundance and the provision you have for us, Lord, and the reason for it, Lord, so we can be a blessing, so we can be used by you in great ways, oh God, in every area of our lives. May our lips have on it a testimony of your faithfulness and your greatness and your abundance and your provision. Lord, I pray that the word from our lips this Christmas season will be all, oh, you should see the blessing and the abundance that God has for you if you will just give him a chance, if you'll just listen to his voice, if you'll just place your faith in him. God, we want to be that testimony. Fill us afresh, oh God, I pray, with your water of life, that it may become a river in us, overflowing its banks, oh God, to the fields and the towns and the city around us. 
We love you today, oh God. I pray that you would be glorified by us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Spill some water on somebody today. Maybe even have a snowball fight. God bless you. Have a great day.